Welcome to episode 117 of the Roger Snipe Show. The Roger Snipes Show. Most people think that when you get older, you're supposed to deteriorate and become weaker. It is true that most people's physical prime peaks at around 30 years old. Then we see a low decline in hormones, muscle growth, recovery, and energy levels. Why does our prime end? As we age, damage and stress increase within our bodies. One night of bad sleep in your 20s is very different than when you're in your 30s, 40s, or older. The average man will lose 1% of his muscle mass every year beyond 30, even if they maintain the same diet and exercise routine. Most people say that this is normal and part of aging, but what if you could change that and stay youthful for longer? What if we could take advantage of our experience in life, then combine it with elevated levels of health? We can with Prime. Prime is your ultimate guardian for muscle, strength, recovery, and hormone health. Prime is packed with clinically validated premium ingredients that help build muscle, maintain healthy hormone levels, and keep you in your prime longer. There's no shortcuts here. Prime is a collection of the utmost premium supplemental solutions to keep you at your best or prime for as long as possible. It contains creatine and GAA. Research shows that creatine has important anti-aging effects in vital tissues throughout the body. It enhances mitochondrial functions which helps reduce aging. It also has GAA, which is a precursor to creatine that converts to creatine into our cells. A patented combination leads to higher levels in the muscles and brain compared to monohydrate alone. Tesna, a new natural testosterone booster clinically validated to improve total testosterone levels in young and old males alike. HMB, a gold standard dose of hydroxymethylbutyrate, perhaps the only supplemental ingredient more powerful than creatine for men over 30 by increasing anabolism, which is muscle growth, and inhibiting catabolism, muscle breakdown, leading to better body composition and improved performance benefits. It also has betaine anhydrous, zinc citrate, and boron citrate, which all contributes to improved vitamin intake, healthy testosterone production, anabolic hormones, IGF-1, muscular performance, boost in strength, reduced fatigue, and cardiovascular improvement. Check out drinkhrw.com and use coupon code SNIPES10 for 10% off. Yo, what's good? What's going on, everyone? It has been a minute. Well, a bit more than a minute. It's been, <laughs> I think it's been about 11 months since I've done the last podcast. You know, at the time I decided, you know what? I've been doing quite a few back to back. And I thought, let me just take maybe a week off. And I thought, do you know what? That was really good. Let's make that two weeks. And then I thought, Do you know, what? let me just write off the entire month. And before I knew it, <laughs> one month turned into two months, then three months, then four months. And um, I just kind of fell off track, to be honest with you. I've got like, um, I've got a few podcasts, which is already kind of on my hard drive, which I haven't published yet. So I'm going to slowly start publishing them and then start interviewing more people. So I have to apologize for the major delay and um, hope to get back into it. So um, yeah, there's lots of people which I wanna to speak to. I want to diversify the amount of, the type of people that I speak to as well. And um, hopefully you make it exciting for you guys. And always feel free to leave comments or even um, submit some ideas of people that you'd like me to interview as well. All right, so the person who I'm going to be speaking to today is uh, Jay Campbell. He is a four-time international best-selling author. We spoke about testosterone optimization as one of the subjects. And what was quite interesting was 
it wasn't just speaking about men, but it was also women. Um, there's a, a massive epidemic of low testosterone now and lots of people are taking synthetics in order to raise it. But there are some natural means in, win in which it can be raised. But we talk quite heavily about that. Uh, we also delve into raising your vibrations and consciousness, which has started to become quite a big thing in the whole, um, not just biohacking, but more kind of holistic health area um, even people who might be religious have taken more of a uh, spiritual understanding so it's not too regimented with following uh, you know particular scriptures or a book whereas spirituality is a bit more free-flowing and there's actually a lot of science to it it's not it's not woo-woo, it's not airy-fairy, it's um, it's science, it's science. And some of the people which I will be getting on, I'm look getting on the podcast, I will be looking to cover that, like a lot of science behind it, how we can raise our vibrations and consciousness, and this is what Jay Campbell does as well. So anyway, without going too much into that, let's bring on Jay Campbell. Hey, Jay, how you doing, my friend? Roger, what's up, my brother? Thank you for having me here today. Honored, humbled, and privileged to be here. Oh, God bless you, man. Thanks for being available. Um, <laughs> we tried to set this up a little while ago, but um, I think we probably just both got a bit busy. But thanks yeah. for reminding me, you know? For sure. For sure. Yeah, for sure. I, I love your content. Uh, from what I see from your profile, um, you're quite an advocate of biohacking, uh, which I love. I talk about it quite a lot. And um, spirituality, you know, um, higher consciousness and that sort of thing. And I love it. So I'll definitely want to divulge in that today. Sure. Um, I had a discussion one time with, um, or on my podcast, a lady called Caroline Leaf. I'm not sure if you uh, know this lady. She's pretty well known, actually. Um, she kind of, she combines um, a lot of things to do with the mind, um, quantum energy and science. And um, when I was going through your content, I was thinking, do you know what? There's, there's, there's some yeah. kind of similarities here. <laughs> Very similar, yeah. And, and you know, it's, it's much about life to be honest with you. And I think um, the problem is what I find is a lot of people, they, they try to segregate it. They try to, it's like, okay, it's an either or Come on, pick, pick it, pick which one, you know? Right. And right. there's so much, uh, there's so much infusion in it, in it and understanding how to make it work together is, is, is what is going to um, raise you as a human being, you know, right. make you a better human being. That's exactly um, right. It, it, it like, it allows you to catabolize, uh, you know, all the things that you know about, let's say, from your experience living on Earth and then, you know, getting to that awareness. I love that, you know, the quantum field, you know, having a quantum awareness. And, you know, once you're quantumly aware of like what's going on on the planet, you know, it's a lot easier to truly quantify your teachings or the things that you've learned in, in a way that, you know, most people can understand. At least I find it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll definitely get into that. One thing I wanted to cover, though, um, I think in a post you mentioned something about therapeutic testosterone. Uh, why do you recommend it so much? And uh, what type of people would you say would benefit from it? Um, the, major mo the majority of people on planet Earth right now today, due to the environmental degradation and contamination, have a hormonal deficiency. This is both men and women. Um, you know, it's estimated that depending on the culture, depending on the country, but most first world countries, UK, the United States, Canada, uh, you know, most of the EU, the, the environment is contaminated, Roger. I mean, you know, we, there's so much industrial pollution and smog and particulates, and then you've got, you know, plastics and phytoestrogens and endocrine disrupting chemicals and 
phthalates and BPA. And then, you know, you've got the stuff they're spraying in the skies. I mean, essentially we're in a toxic soup, a fishbowl of toxins. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, therefore most people's uh, endocrine systems malfunction, you know, for example, and again, this is all supported in my books. The data is there. Um, 75 to hundred years ago, <clears throat> our forefathers, grandfathers had uh, free testosterone levels three to four times what the average person walking around on the street does today. And again, this is due to this environmental degradation. You know, essentially our endocrine systems and our central nervous systems are under siege. Now, uh, some people through, you know, physical interventions, uh, living a low inflammation lifestyle, maintaining a lean body, and then obviously there's genetic components to this, uh, are able to you know, keep their, opt keep their hormones in a somewhat optimum range as they age, but they are the outliers. Uh, when you start looking now, like across the United States, because I know the data in the United States is pretty significant, but I'm sure Britain yeah. is, you know, very close by. I mean, mm -hmm. this is insane when I tell you this, but 40%, I'm sorry, uh, people over the age, it's, it's actually 60, almost 70% of men and women over the age of 40 in the United States are obese. Obese. Wow. So when you understand that data and you understand what obesity does to a human body, so, so let's break it down. So obesity increases the level of cellular and systemic inflammation, right? So when you're, when you're inflamed because you're obese, your body is you know, initiating a cascade of what are called inflammasomes throughout the cellular network all day at all time. And those people are diseased. I mean, because you are feeling like absolute, you know what, because you have these inflammasomes flowing through your body. So over time, that's going to lead to one of the various diseases of aging, which is, you know, ultimately diabetes, insulin resistance, metabolic disorder, some sort of, you know, heart issue or vascular issue. Uh, and on and on it goes it also leads to type three diabetes, which is really just neurodegenerative disorder, like Alzheimer's and dementia. So mm -hmm. understanding that, the first culprit or the first degradation point is the hormones. You know, you got belly fat, you're a man or a woman. You know, if you're a woman, you've got a lot of estrogenic body fat, like in the glute ham, you know, butt tie in, you're going to have a hormonal deficiency because your body is not designed to carry that type of weight around with that level of inflammation. And so the first thing that it shuts down is uh, the endocrine system. So women and men are suffering from a decline in testosterone. Uh, usually, you know, they, there can be uh, a supremely low estrogen or supremely high estrogen. So essentially the endocrine system breaks down. So this is why I'm a big advocate for utilizing therapeutic testosterone, because when it's done correctly, you can, you know, essentially control for a lot of factors that you can't control due to the environment. The problem, Roger, is, is that, and, you know, this is going to sound crazy, but it's true. I mean, I've been doing this for 22 years. 95% of doctors have absolutely no idea what they're doing when they prescribe hormones. No, <laughs> they have absolutely no clue. And if you're one, if you're using one of those doctors, you're on a path, you're on a best, basically a crash and burn collision path. I mean, there's, there's really nothing you can do because they don't know what to do. You know, they're not using the hormone themselves mm -hmm. and, you know, they are using like, you know, various methodologies they get from like bodybuilders and, you know, forums and stuff like that i mean you know at the really? end of the day they don't teach they do not teach um what i call standard patient of care medicine for hormone optimization right like mm -hmm. it usually falls to urologists or endocrinologists and those guys are just textbook you know decipherers they, mm -hmm. they they don't do it themselves they're not they don't have like a you know a patient body that they have on hormones so you know at the end of the day there's five percent of doctors on the planet that can do this right and for those guys that do this right, and again, this is for men and women, um, you know, they can really change a person's life. Because I always say, you know, obviously you're familiar in my books, I say that when it's done right, you know, a man and a woman look at their lives literally before optimization and, and, and after, because the, 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 the difference is that great. Mm hmm. So you'd mentioned that uh, most doctors pretty much don't know what they're doing. Are you right. talking mainly about um, like, uh, general practitioners or like are they, is this like all physicians what about functional medicine type of doctors and homeopaths and naturopath practitioners those sort of people 
Surely yeah, it's a good question. Um, mm -hmm. So when I say 95% of doctors don't know what they do, don't know what they're doing, I mean, when specifically in the purposes of helping to optimize people's hormones. So it really doesn't matter whether a person is a functional medicine doctor, a naturopath, or, you know, a standard patient of care, PPO doctor, or a, you know, a, what do you call it in, in England with socialized medicine, you know, one of those doctors. I mean, I, I kind of look at them now in the United States, I quantify it as your insurance subrogated or your cash pay. <laughs> right. So most of the cash pay guys are what you just talked about, functional medicine, people, wellness, holistic, uh, naturopaths, those type of docs. But again, because this is a very nuanced business and it really does require working with patients, hopefully male and female for, you know, a decade at minimum. I, mean, I always tell people you're a doctor and you're on my network and I'm referring you. You have to have at least 10 years balancing and optimizing male and female hormones. Otherwise, I don't recommend you because mm -hmm. that's how much of an experiential based practice it is. Because as you know, and this is something that I've discussed on Chris's podcast, you know, I've been on Chris's podcast a lot. I'm very mm -hmm. blessed in that regard. <laughs> Every human being is N of one. We are all biochemically inter-individual. There are no cookie cutter boilerplate templates for anyone for anything. That's why I like when people message me and they're like, Hey man, can you just give me this for that? And I'm like, no, <laughs> because it doesn't work like that. I don't, I, I got to look at you. I got to see how you physically present. I have to understand your somatotype. You know, I have to understand like how you process carbohydrates, you know, how insulin sensitive you are. I got to understand your androgen receptor sensitivity. Like there's all these different things that a person, you know, truly wants to understand to optimize a person. And so it's like, if you're going to work with a doctor, those doctors all have, have to understand those things too. And that's why I say, most docs don't, and it's, and it's not to disparage them. It's just that this is not their business, yeah. you know? So the docs I work with in the States have literally been working to hormonally optimize people for two decades, mm -hmm. right? They've got thousands of patients. They've seen it all. You know, they know, like, I mean, for example, think about this, like there are definitely a percentage of men who start therapeutic testosterone who are called hyper excretors. And when they use it, they deplete their magnesium so quickly and so fast that they literally go into an anxiety filled panic within 48 hours of using injectable testosterone. I swear to God, I did oh, not know this wow. three years ago. Mm. I did not know this three years ago, but thankfully due to genetic testing and, you know, looking at polymorphisms and all of these different things, we can see now what a person genetically codes for. Now, you know, obviously DNA is not the ultimate arbiter. It's ultimately epigenetics. It's our lifestyle. But if you do know that this person has this code on, uh, you can, and they go on therapeutic testosterone, you can be prepared and you can obviously, you know, use a different delivery system because that person can't use injectable because the injectable is what causes the hyper -exc uh, excretion of magnesium which just makes them literally go crazy. I mean, you know, true story, just so you understand this, like one of my good friends is the doctor that told me the story and I'm not, you know, violating patient confidentiality because I don't know who this person is, but this person was a CEO of a legitimate business in the United States. And within three days of starting therapeutic testosterone, the wife called the doc, who's my friend and said, my husband is laying under our bed, afraid wow. to go to work in a panic. And so thankfully the doctor that I'm talking about had seen this in two other patients. And it was like, Oh my God, he's like, no problem. I can fix yeah. him. I'll, where are you guys at right now? I'll literally head over, but that's what it is. So, I mean, you know, ultimately that kind of level of awareness comes from working with patients, mm -hmm. you know, of many different modalities uh, to, to become aware of that. And, and again, that wouldn't even have been known, you know, six years ago before we had genetic testing. So, you know, the, the beauty of today is that we have so much information as you kind of alluded to in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And it's now about processing the information because I think a lot of people become overwhelmed with information. And then the next step level is like, how do I trust this person's information versus this next person's uh, information? So again, as I always say, you gotta have a doc that you're working with who's been doing this a long time so that they can pretty much account for most things. Mm -hmm. there's, there's such a mixed array of information is unreal. Yes. You know, there's so many, so many podcasts that have so many yeah. different diverse thought processes. So many people we follow on social media that have yeah. their own input and experiences that they've had from life. So many books that we may have read and right. we respect all these people. Yeah but they've got different views and life can get so confusing. What it's I've also, really, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, was, I mean, well, look, it's 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 beautiful. It, it, it's beautiful to to say that because you know, to, to expound on that, because I'm in 100% agreement, you know, I see a lot of the younger people, you know, thankfully, you know, so you and I from our generation, because what are you like 40? How old are you? 43. Okay, yeah, so I'm 51. So our generation, thankfully, you know, and again, it's, I look at it as a blessing. Uh, we had to do the research, bro. Like, yeah. we didn't have technology forever, right? Like, you look at no. these younger gens, these kids literally, their discernment and their critical thinking is like this. Hey, Google. <laughs> hey, Siri. Hey, I, yeah, whatever, Alexa. I mean, mm -hmm. it goes on and on and on, right? So then that's their level of thinking. Mm -hmm. So when you, you now go on the internet and you see Roger Snipes, Jay Campbell, Chris Gathen, Ben Greenfield, blah, blah. How do you know? And they don't know because they're young. And they don't have critical thinking development or discernment development because they never had to. This is not disparaging them. This is reality. And so this is why you've created or the internet has created this, like you said, a, a malaise. It's like a, a morass of all this disparate data. And then how does a person discern, like, can this help me? Because this guy's saying, you know, different than what this guy's saying. So it is, bro, it, it, it really is. And so I always, it always defaults for me back to, is the person that you're listening to walking the walk? Clearly you and I are walking the walk. Do we have 10 to 15 and longer years doing the work provably with measurable results with other people who can vouch for us, right? Because all these kids, you know, and you know, you know this, you know, I see these young kids because they're always messaging me. I'm sure they're messaging you too. And, you know, they're 21 or 22 or 23 and they can do all this. And they're like, oh man, I'm a big fan. I'm a big follower. I've watched all your stuff. Blah, blah, blah. This is what I can do for you. And then I'm like, who's your number one person? And they'll be like, uh, where did you learn that? And I'm like, they're like, I watch Grant Cardone videos. <laughs> I'm like, dude, <laughs> like, no offense, Grant's a friend of mine. But at the end of the day, it's like, that's not how you get to a level of mastery. You get to a level of mastery by working through it over time, right? Applied effort, consistency, and then you eventually get to a level of mastery. But you can't have a level of mastery at 21 because you watch 10 Grant Cardone videos, just as if you watch Jay Campbell and Roger Snipes videos. You're 21. You, you got to do the work. You got to, you got to put the time in, I'm afraid. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it is quite hilarious when people look at me and they're like, how long, how long would it take me to get muscles like, like you? you? I'm like, mate, I've been training for almost 30 years, so... Mm, exactly. Or, or uh, how do I put on muscle quickly? I don't know. <laughs> well, well, exactly. Uh, or, or, no, no, even better. I'll, I'll, this is great. This is a great podcast for this. They're 50 years old. They got 10 million in the bank and one foot in the grave. And they come to me and you and they're like, I want you to give me a 90-day plan. They're like, bro. How long did it take you to put one foot in the grave and look like you're looking like you think me and Roger can give you a 90 day plan, tell you to tighten up your carbs and increase your protein and do German volume training. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. they, they don't have a realistic expectation. And, it, mm -hmm. and what's so crazy is this is a person probably who's like a genius in their business to get the 10 million in the bank or whatever, you know, and now it's like their body is destroyed. They're inflamed. They're fat. They're sick. They're, you know, they're comorbid, all those things. And, but they want you or Jay or, you know, one of us to give them a 90 day plan. It's like, motherfucker, you ain't going to get anything in 90 days. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we, this is a function of our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it is, it, it is crazy, but I mean, again, the internet is a gift, but it's also the greatest curse because it really does tell people or gives people a false and misleading impression because exactly what you're saying like how do i put on muscle how do i look like you and you're like dude i have no idea you have your own genetics man you got to work mm -hmm. that's it figure out what can work for you as well what works for me won't necessarily work for you you that's spoke right. um you touched on uh, hormone optimization maybe something to do with physicians i, I can't remember sure. maybe one of your friends or something um you said um yeah, you mentioned about it. And also, I know you mentioned about it in uh, some of your posts about saying that hormone optimization is key to um, living longer and healthier. Yes. Um, without, is it, without, without a doubt. 
is it is it the same as saying um, hormonal hormonal imbalance can, can shorten your life? It, it's literally the same thing. Right. And you know, let me let me, let me clarify that because it's a good point. Um, I think a lot of people are confused, you know, about what hormonal optimization means, right? Because a lot of people are brainwashed by the you know the standardized you know Western mainstream media of you know, hormonal optimization is like using, you know, anabolic steroids or, you know, they then morph it into like looking at competitive professional bodybuilders, you know, who are mutated from everything they do, the polypharmacy. And, and look, I have a lot of friends in the, in the professional bodybuilding ranks. So I love those guys. And, you know, I'm always happy to help those guys, but that's a whole different story than what you and I are talking about right now. And, you know, hormonal optimization essentially literally means the best way to say it is optimizing your endocrine system, whether you're a man or woman, to live longer and stronger, right? To be able to be 65 to 75, even to 85, and hopefully 95 and 105, and pick up there your grandkids, go. pick up your grandkids, have no spinal, uh, you know, laxity or, you know, weakness in your erectors, you know, have strong core strength, you know, shoulders, good form and posture, you know, your back, everything is aligned uh, anatomically, that's what hormonal optimization is. And I mean, again, as you know, majority of people, you know, to speak in code, you know, who have died in the last two and a half years from the big C were really already comorbid, right? Like they're, they, they, they treated their body like a dumpster fire, uh, you know, and again, you know, I, I don't like to say elderly, but let's, that's let, let's just, just to be honest and a point of record, uh, the baby boomers and up, you know, they don't know anything about nutrition. You know, my father is a very successful guy. He's a multimillionaire, he's retired but he is clueless about nutrition. He thinks that nutrition is like, you know, a hunk of cheese dipped in peanut butter drinking milk down with it, right? Like they, they don't understand because of their generation, they didn't learn about this. I mean, you know, that generation of people also learned that you don't want to become big and bulky because muscle turns to fat. I mean, you've heard it all, bro. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, I mean, it's the most insane shit, but like that generation only can work with what they can work with. And it's very difficult for guys like me and you to go to them, you know, which would be our parents and be like, Hey dude, I got a better way. This is the way you got to do it. Right. Cause they learned a whole different thing. So I personally just like to tell people that as long as you are focused on living longer and stronger, uh, you know, having more energy, being able to, you know, not want to take a nap at one 32 o'clock, two 30 in the afternoon when you're in your forties and fifties and sixties, uh, and again, have the energy to, you know, compete with your grandkids or pick up your grandkids or hike mountains with your grandkids. You know, that's the key, you know, to hormonal optimization. And, you know, to address your original question, uh, an imbalance is also the same thing. One thing I do like to say, though, just to kind of correct people, and I really was, I guess, the guy that really pushed this across the universe. It used to be testosterone replacement therapy. Okay. But that's a horrible acronym, which is TRT, because why would you replace a molecule, a biologically, a, a, essentially the lifeblood molecule of sexual, sexual differentiation in men and women? Why would you replace it when it's cessating as you age? You don't want to replace it. You want to optimize it, right? So we took the TRT and we went to TOT, which is testosterone optimization therapy. And the most beautiful thing happened, and you're the first guy I can share this with. This guy who's now becoming like, you know, very world renowned, he just sent me his book because he wants to come on the podcast. His, All name's right. Dr. Jud his name's Dr. Judson Brandeis. He's a men's health specialist and urologic surgeon. He quoted me in the book. Oh, amazing. In the back. And he said, testosterone optimization. Love it. I don't have a, I, I mean, I, I need to highlight it because it's so profound. Actually, this is what he said. Just it's one sentence. He said, Unfortunately, only 5%. And by the way, Roger, look at this book, The 21st That's, Century, man. It's hmm. 980 pages. My book was 680 pages. And I'm like, you don't make a book that big because half the people can't read. <laughs> but it says, unfortunately, only 5% of males who suffer from testosterone insufficiency receive testosterone replacement therapy. Even fewer are receiving testosterone optimization therapy. And then he goes on and, you know, gives me some credit. But it's like, wow, mind blowing, right? Because he just sent this to me. My, my team you know, takes, gives out my address. So people books show up in my house. I'm sure. Yeah, and, I, yeah. and I, you know, so I open the box and I'm like, what the hell is this? And then I'm like, 
somebody wrote a 930 page book and I went through it. And it's really good. What he did was he got like some of the top docs to just contribute a chapter. So he didn't really have to do as much work. Right. Mm-hmm. And then he got a pharmaceutical company to pay for it, wrap it up and package it. But he <laughs> quoted me. So I'm like, well, shit, I want to talk to this guy, but it's literally the first time that I saw actually mainstream medicine say optimization versus replacement. And again, that is the critical factor because you are not replacing a hormone that is dying, right? Because as you know, as we get older, our hormones cessate. So optimization is using a surgically precise dose of bioidentical testosterone. And again, this is not just for men, this is for women too, uh, to optimize levels that are naturally declining as you age. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So talking on that, let's say everything is all optimized and um, you live a nice, healthy life. Um, I wanted to talk about um, biological age testing. Would it show that your biological age would be better? And what's your thoughts on um, doing biological age testing? I love them. I have both of them. So I've done, uh, I just actually moved them. So I've got true diagnostic over there and then the glycan age one over there. So my true diagnostic talk. So, so the answer to your question is it absolutely with the big caveat improves your biological age, as long as you are living in inflammation or what I like to call insulin controlled lifestyle, right? So if you are controlling for your insulin, you know, and again, there's many ways to do that depending on your nutritional strategy, you know, if you eat a low carb diet or you eat a carnivore or a keto or, a, you know, uh, you're faster like I am or something like that. And then you also use, you know, various mitochondrial optimizing agents, insulin controlling agents, you know, dihydroberberin, metformin, whatever. If you're doing those things and you're also using uh, therapeutic hormones, 100% your biological age is going to be better. I mean, mm. again, with the caveat being you don't have a lot of inflammation, right? The, the, the fatter, let's just put it this way. I just literally talked about this on a podcast yesterday. The number one thing a person can do as they age to live the longest and strongest is to remain lean. There is nothing else. Testosterone, growth hormone, any supplement, blah, 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 this or that, or training program, or rolfing or ART or cranial sacral, you know, there is, you know, yoga, you know, 20 minutes a day of meditation every hour, you know, it doesn't matter. You will not live the longest and strongest possible unless you are lean. The fatter you are, the higher your body fat, the faster you are going to die. And that is proven statistically. As I've been saying, and I've written this in every book I've written, uh, muscle is the greatest deterrent to the diseases of aging. A guy that looks like you and me is going to live longer, you know, knock on wood that we don't get into a car accident or deal with something else because that muscle that we possess is literally blocking disease processes from occurring in our body. I know that that's going to be hard for some people because you're, you know, muscular dude. I'm a muscular dude. That's why I was trying to joke. I was like, shit, should I go put on a tank top to make this thing look better? <laughs> uh, this podcast better? But no, but I mean, the, re- the reality is, is that like the more muscle a person has, the more insulated they are from any of the diseases of aging, because the more muscular, and you know this, I'm preaching to the choir, probably your audience too, but the more muscular you are, the more calories you burn at rest, the more resistant to uh, sarcopenia, okay, uh, uh, bone mineral density issues, Uh, the more, the more, I mean, look, the newest research also says the more resistant you are to neurodegenerative, because again, neurodegenerative is type three diabetes. It literally is your, uh, chemo receptor, insulin chemo receptors breaking down in this, in the brain, synaptic, dendritic, and serotonergic get gunk from your shitty lifestyle, which is again, always high insulin. People that drink too much alcohol, eat too much sugar, eat too much processed food. Um, they get that's, that's what it comes from. You know, yeah. Dude, there's still doctors out there. You know, this, that are telling people diabetes runs in your family and you're like, wow. Yeah. What? yeah. What? No, being a fat, lazy, non moving human is what runs in your family. Not uh-huh. Diabetes, uh-huh. diabetes uh-huh. is a lifestyle result. Mm. Yeah, I do. I, I do find that there are some people who are naturally overweight even if they eat healthy though like genuinely yeah. like yeah legitimately For sure. For sure. um well I, I always thought to myself 
perhaps a, a, I'd read somewhere that a fecal transplant could possibly work, but what would your thoughts, uh, or what would your, yeah, what would your thoughts be for those type of people that struggle to keep fat off, especially I mean, look, young I answer, kids? I, I can answer this very well. My family, I'm the oldest of nine children. Uh, so first off, yes, that's true. Um, there is a genetic, there's a ge genetic uh, variable thing here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, somatypical expression, if you are a, you know, endomorph, right, you know, and, and I know there's no pure of anything, but an endomorph yeah, yeah, is yeah, naturally, yeah. a naturally plump, soft, you know, mostly endurance muscle fiber typing, uh, slow metabolisms, you know, the, the type of people that look at a slice of pizza and gain weight, right? Mm -hmm. um, those type of people, like, you got to, I mean, look, and, and, and my brother is one of these people uh, and I can tell you how he's lived his entire life uh, to not be that way. But I mean, you got to be a militant person, you know, a person like that cannot eat carbohydrates. It's literally that simple. I'll, I'll give you an example. So my brother was very fat, you know, very soft. He's a tall person. So that helped him, but he was fat. I mean, horrible metabolism, uh, very long, you know, arms and legs. So, you know, he couldn't build muscle even if he trained hard, he was a good athlete. Um, but just soft. And he literally, Roger developed a strategy and this is crazy. And I don't recommend this for other people, but he, when he goes out, he's a very successful guy in his life. Uh, when he goes out to restaurants or meet dinners or, you know, whatever, he'll, he'll chew like one bite of a decadent food. And usually he'll either spit it out. Like he'll literally chew it up and spit it out, or that'll be it. He just shuts it down. Right. And so he's like a grazer, like he'll eat green vegetables and, you know, some form of, you know, healthy protein or, you know, animal based protein. And that's all he eats. He doesn't eat any carbohydrates. He can't eat, you know, cookies. He can't, he can't enjoy what normal person lives. And if you have those type of genetics and you want to enjoy your life from a food standpoint, and you're going to suffer, you know, the issues due to that, you know? So, mm. I mean, like it's supreme insulin regulation. And then for those people too, depending on how lean they want to be, they're going to do a lot of cardio, unfortunately, because again, their body is so resistant. They can't even build muscle. You know, these are the guys yeah. that have really, really tiny wrists. You know, obviously you, you're familiar with like ectomorphic hard gainer types. Most hard gainer people actually have uh, intolerances. They need to do genetic testing to find out like what foods they can't digest and assimilate because they really do have like an allergen or an, uh, they're having a histological response to a lot of the foods. Mm -hmm. But for people that are just absolutely the bottom of the barrel genetically, you know, from a som somatical expression standpoint, mm -hmm. militancy, no carbohydrates, uh, you know, low calories. I mean, you know, you know, the types, man, like they, 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 they don't even eat, you know, and they don't have thyroid destruction. They just can't eat without mm -hmm. gaining weight. So those type of people just have to live a very militant lifestyle. And by the way, my brother is six, four and a half and probably 190. Oh, wow. 190. So he's just six, four, pure bones. I mean, he's, mm -hmm. you know, fast, wiry dude. I mean, he's older now. I mean, he's 49, I guess, but, but oh, shit, he'll be 50. Yeah, he, turn, he turns 50 in March. So, but, uh, but, you know, when he was in high school, he was 230, mm. you know, fat. Well, so, I, I mean, like, it's possible that you can definitely alter, you know, your DNA from a standpoint of like what you should look like. But again, it's militant. So I, I would yeah, say to those yeah. people, it's possible, but they got to work really hard. Yeah, I think for a lot of people, it's um, relationship with food issues. That's what I totally. tend to find with a lot of totally. clients. It's like, it's not that we don't know what to do. It's pretty yeah. simple, really. Just yeah. stop eating shit. But a lot of the time it's what they've grown up eating. 100%. And, you 100%. know, this food is supposed to be supposed to make me happy. You know, right. it's uh, no, absolutely dude. And well, look, I, I want to add something to that because you, you triggered me to say it, you know, and I learned this from my wife. Yeah. If a person does not feel worthy of looking fit, whatever that is defined to them, it doesn't matter what you give them, what I give them, what m protocols, what diets, what supplements, what drug interventions, it doesn't matter. You know, ultimately they will go back to what they feel worthy of being. And so you're 100% right. That is the truth. Like if they feel or associate that with like a cultural thing, like my wife is, her mom is Mexican and, you know, her dad is a, you know, half Irish, half Indian dude. So like culturally, Mexican people are fat, 
because it's like that. I, I mean, seriously, as they get yeah. age, as they get older, they get plump because, like you said, they associate what you know well being and happiness with certain cultural foods that they all have to partake in, and they're all horrible for them. Bro, Mexico right now, and I go there all the time. I'm going there on Sunday. Eighty percent of adults in Mexico are type two diabetic right now. Eighty percent. Eighty percent. So that's how bad the standard American diet really, which is the Western diet, you know, the sad diet, the standard American diet, that's mm -hmm. infiltrated Mexico. So um, quickly, um, before we, um, I want to move on to sure. a slightly different subject, but um, uh, you'd mentioned about, you know, lowering carbohydrates and sort of restricting the amount in which you're eating, you know, for the people that are sure. more kind of endomorphic, that, yep. that sort of side. Um, one question which I asked in between that was, um, how would how would you address it if you're if you're young, if you're let's say fifteen or younger or something, you know, yeah. or, or if you have kids that you know that are just overweight and they're eating what you're eating, you eat healthy, you eat the exact same thing, but they're overweight, and obviously, as we understand, you're not really supposed to restrict the amount of foods that you're giving children. So, yeah, what would you say to that situation there? That's an amazing question, man. Uh, no one's ever asked me that. So thank you. So I have a 14 and 12 year old daughter. Uh, my 14 year old daughter, now they have uh, elite genetics. My, my ex was a French Vietnamese fitness model, you know, absolutely insane genetics. Uh, and they're, so they're, you know, and then they got me, which I don't have the genetics that she has, but I have good genetics, um, you know, but bottom line is like the 14 year old is an athlete and, you know, does everything that I taught her to do, right? She gets up in the morning, she does two day cardio. You know, she's a gymnastics uh, cheer chick. So she can do 12 backflips, you know, wow. across the room. Ooh. And I can throw a tight spiral to her as she comes out of the 12 backflips and she catches it. We do that <laughs> on, at the beach. We do that at the beach all the time. And I put it on Twitter and I'll be like, you know, my daughter is way more athletic than your son. Deal with it. You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> make people joke. But, but, but my 12 year old is not that person and she's not into sports. She's not into training, uh, totally different soul. Right. And that's cool. But if I had a kid that had that issue and I definitely have this in my family, my, my brothers and sisters, dude, I would be really, really you know, I'd had sit them down and I'd have that conversation with them and I'd be very religious and granted, I mean, we're outliers, right. Cause the average person doesn't understand nutrition like we do, mm -hmm. but I would tell them that like, you know, you have a situation where your genetics do not allow you to eat in the way that average quote unquote normal people eat. You can't be eating cakes. You can't be eating ho-hos. You can't be eating Cheetos and all that. So I would have that intelligent conversation with them. And then I would just tell her like, it's up to you though, right? Like if that's the way you want to eat and this makes you happy in this, how you live your life, that's fine. But just realize that there will be, you know, repercussions, ramifications mm -hmm. uh, later in life to your physical health. So, I mean, cause I've, I've had family members uh, you know, asked me to speak to their kids about this. And so I've had these conversations before, so I can easily, you know, break it down for them in a relatable way, but it's tough thing, man, because you're right. Like if somebody's like elite and then the other kid got the bottom of the barrel genetics and just can't process carbohydrates and, you know, insulin, like the other person can, it's a tough thing because they look at you and they're like, but you're my mom or you're my dad. And it's not fair. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Tough, tough. Well, totally. thank you. Thanks for that. Um, sure. so, um, I know that you you're very strong on the whole um, higher consciousness, and I think that on one of your posts you'd mentioned all bodies of every species, and um, well, not post, I think it's on your website. All bodies of every species and all in creation are but vibrations, mm -hmm. um, electronic wave vibrations. Um, yeah, could you explain? Um, what it is to be vibrational, a, a vibrational yeah. being. Yeah, uh, no, for sure. It, it, I mean, it's a great question. Um, it, you know, it's not easily understood, but I will do a good job as good as I can to explain it. So if you, you know, go into like the understandings of quantum entanglement, physics, uh, you know, mechanics, you know, we start understanding that life forces at this level of dimension or this dimension, which, you know, we know ourselves as living in the third dimension are vibrating at a specific level. 
This scale behind me is from Dr. David Hawkins, who calibrated the levels of vibration, which is essentially the levels of consciousness from zero to a thousand. And you can quantify your vibration based on the way you feel, right? So like the lowest form of vibration is shame, guilt, humiliation, despair. And that's be, you know between zero and 20. And then the highest level of vibration is like, you know, thinking of a angel or a God consciousness, which would be like enlightenment, pure consciousness, bliss, right? So most human beings are vibrating in levels in between there, but to understand how it is that we're vibrating, um, you have to really think about, and again, this is deep and this is going to go over some people's heads, you know, who aren't there yet, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, we are, we are physical expressions of energy right so like we all we really truly are is vibrating molecules and what i call oscillating waves of energy right energy and frequency and when you understand that that you're not your body and you know you're not roger snipes and i'm not jay campbell but i am this like spiritual energy being and you're a spiritual energy being and everyone is a spiritual energy being mm -hmm. but we're in these physical bodies in this dimension essentially to what I like to think is evolve and grow our soul, right? So these physical bodies are not everything. And so when you remove the physical body aspect of existence, as you become not body conscious and you become spiritually conscious and you become aware that it's all about raising my frequency. So when I say, you know, Jay Campbell, my, you know, my whole saying is like raise your vibration to oscillation or raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. I'm talking about what do you do as a being when you come into a room or when you do a podcast or when you write an article or an email or whatever it is to help other human beings who are also spiritual vibrating molecules and oscillating waves of energy to expand their consciousness. Because right. when, 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 you, when, you, when you break it all down, in 2019, Roger, I went to Peru with my wife and another couple, and it was so powerful being at you know between 10 and 20,000 feet and all the things we did. We were there for 13 days. I literally had a complete like molecular alteration of myself. And I realized that because at that time I was, you know, the, this, the, the TRT, TOT guy, you know, everybody mm -hmm. reads my books and stuff. I was like this testosterone subject matter expert. But I realized at that point that that's cool. But teaching people to raise their vibration to enhance their consciousness was the most important step because it was about that for the planet. Like we had to get the planet you know, vibrating what, you know, this Hawkins says the line of integrity and the line of integrity is 200 on the level of consciousness meter. And really just for people to understand it, it's courage. So when a person mm -hmm. gets to a level of courage, they're not in fear anymore. Mm -hmm. And most people, and this is, you know, statistically provable, 80% of humanity right now vibrates in fear. Now, obviously the last two and a half years, all the stuff that's happened, People have been pushed into a corner, you know, forced to do this, forced to do that. That causes very much fear-based thinking and fear-based acting and fear-based feeling. So when you can overcome that for various ways, and we can talk about how to overcome that, uh, you know, and you get to this level of courage, you've now increased your consciousness to a place where you're not in fear anymore. And from a biological standpoint, when you're in fear, you are in a central nervous system, autonomic feedback loop lock. So you are literally constantly in a rush of cortisol, uh, you know, uh, low energy, again, low vibration, fear. Fear literally paralyzes people. Mm -hmm. So you can't exercise, you can't eat right, you're not motivated, you're in fear. And obviously the negative effects of fear too is, you know, you have a victim mindset. It's not your fault. You can't take accountability. You can't become personally accountable. You know, and so this is where we find the majority of the masses right now. And oh, we're all there, you know, by the way, at, at various times in our lives until yeah, we yeah. evolve, until yeah. we evolve and we get here. Right. But, but, you know, to, to, to understand, like when you are conscious of this and anyone can be conscious of this, you know, you can buy this guy's books that are amazing. Uh, the first book is the book that I would recommend, which is letting go to get to this like awareness. Um, you become more, in, 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 your life becomes more about serving. And, you know, creating and like, how can I help thousands of people, right? And I'm not saying that everybody's a creator like you and me and influences thousands of people, but, you know, you can be a janitor and do your job so well 
that literally you influence thousands of people a month who come into say the auditorium that you're cleaning. Right. And so it's, it's, it, it doesn't matter what your job is or what you're ranking or how much money you make or any of that stuff or how many followers you have or any of that. It's, are you serving creation, which is, you know, fellow life, not just humans, everything at your highest and best without attachment or expectation. Right. Now yeah. we're human, we have egos, we're fallible. So you're going to be moving up and down, you know, through on this scale for, through various points in time of the day. But as long as you can get back to a place where you're capable of, you know, analyzing your behaviors and your living and you're in the present moment um, with a thought process of, does this serve me? If not, I'm going to let it go. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and, and not in letting it go, I'm not going to react to it, which is what most people do, which is the ego, right? You react out of fear. Yeah. When you're, when you're vibrating in a higher conscious, you choose to respond out of love. So you can react out of fear or you can respond out of love. Responding out of love is a much more difficult process because it requires balance. It requires you to center yourself, to maintain composure, to not react. You know, another, right, another right, good example right. of this that so people can follow is like you meditate. And, we'll, and, and I want to talk about ways to raise your vibration, but you're meditating in the morning and it's amazing. And you leave your house and you're in a state of Zen and you get in your car and you go to a place of work or wherever you go and a maniac cuts you off on the freeway, you know, and their first reaction is like the ego is survival. You grip the steering wheel. A person who is responding out of love is literally going to center themselves and say, take a breath or whatever, and then wave at that person and say, wow, you must be having a bad day. I send you love. Mm -hmm. 80 to 90% of people are going to grip the steering wheel, speed up, get next to them and you know, yeah. pull over right like because that's the ego you know that's you know reacting you know you're in survival and this person tried to kill you and so now instinctively instinctively you're going to do the same mm-hmm. you know and i live my life like that bro until i was 45 the absolute maniac right but, up until you know, 45 did you say yeah yeah and i'm 51 now so in the last right, six right. years this <laughs> is when all of this awareness and this center this presence and the centering has come and again it's from doing the work I wanted to ask, you see that that chart thing that you have behind you, that was it map of consciousness? Map of consciousness, yeah. Yeah. Um, so does it does it have like um frequency numbers by each one? Because I can't Absolutely. quite see it. Right. Yeah. So what's the one in the middle, the yellow one? The, so the line of integrity is 200. Okay. Did you say that one was courage? <laughs> that's it. Courage. So that's like borderline. That's so there's is it like courage from what I understand is um like almost like feeling the fear, but doing it, do it anyway, you know, exactly. like a person who, so it's like, it's still a bit of fear there, <laughs> you know, a hundred percent, right, that's right. right. No, that's hundred um, percent. And that, another thing I wanted to talk about was um, there's a book. I can't remember which book it was, but you know, Joe Dispenza, right? He of course, speaks yeah. quite heavily on consciousness. Yes. Um, I think he, he mentions about, um, different levels of vibrations. Um, Actually, no, I'm mixing different books now, uh, but different people. There's Jerry Hicks, actually. Jerry Hicks. Yeah, of course, of course, and and Jerry Hicks, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they actually talk about different um, levels of um, vibrations. And rather than trying to leap from depression to go all the way up to love or joy or something. Baby uh, steps. Yeah, I thought I found that very interesting. So maybe that could explain it, that little um, consciousness thing. So one thing which I learned was, um, so if a person is in depression, it like it, them moving up a scale would be perhaps moving into anger. That's right. And um, so it's it's actually healthy for them to be angry than to be depressed. But the the the, thing, the situation that happens there is people around you might not understand that, and because it's not um, the 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 damage is not inside anymore. It's you're exactly. letting it out, so other, other people might feel offended by it, and because of that, some people might um, because they don't like it. Some people end up going back into right. uh, you know holding it all in and not letting it out. Um, 
this this um, map of consciousness is is that your own or is that somewhere that could no, be no 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 this is from dr david hawkins you can buy okay. this anybody can buy this from his website which uh hold on i'll show you what it is okay you can buy these it's from veritas publishing so it's veritas v-e-r-i-t-a-s-p-u-b.com but you can get these so it's like, you know, they even have them broken down in smaller ones because I give these out to people and stuff that come on my podcast and stuff. So it's like God view, life view, level, log, which is the quantification of the points and then the emotion and the process, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So again, like, like what you were just saying, to, to, to really dive deeper. So like being in depression is elimination, the process. So moving up one level to, you know, to echo what you just said would be depression to vindictive. Right. So there's stages of craziness, right? So you're now vindictive, which is evil, and it's destruction. And then you move up from that, and now you're not vindictive, you're condemning. So condemning is like you're hopeless because now you're in abdication. And then you move up another level and you're disdainful, which is regret and despondency. And then as you go up, you can see everything you were just saying, which is exactly what Esther and, Jay and Jerry talk about. But when you get up to courage, you're in permitting, it's feasible. Mm -hmm. you can affirm and then it's in, you're taking empowerment you're becoming empowered mm -hmm. so then literally the next level up is enabling satisfactory you're now in neutrality so by the way neutrality which is 250 if we get the collective energy field which is the collective vibration of humanity to neutrality guess what dude the matrix ends oh right 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 it literally ends there's no anger there's no animosity there's no differentiation between white people or Asian people or black people or Indian people. Like all of these differences end. And we, you know, I won't say we all sing Kumbaya, but we, we recognize our collective unity as humans. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're all the same. We all have a vibration of, you know, energy and frequency that, make, that allows us an awareness to say that we're all in the same boat. Yeah, yeah um that makes total sense what would you say to uh, about um you mentioned about there's just um um just a collection of lots of different oh i can't remember those words you mentioned but so uh, what i wanted to kind of uh, get to was would you say that things like emf could affect frequency and maybe some other things in the air how, how deep do you want me to put my tinfoil hat on right now, man? Because, <laughs> bro, you're so, so look, so I'm, I'm going to be honest with you right now. The yeah. fact that you just brought that up is God at work mm -hmm. because that is the resonant energy field that just went into your mind and downloaded that into your consciousness to speak to me because that's the most important question that anyone could ask because everything is energy and frequency. My daughters are 14 and 12, which I already told you about. They went back to be with their mom last Tuesday. I have been raising them for 10 years, but because I live in Southern California and you already know all the things going on in this People's Republic of California, I can't have my daughters here anymore because they can't go to school. So let them go. Living with my ex, Tampa, Florida. As you know, Florida is the free state, of last free state, I think, in the US from all the tyranny, but they left me and dude, the energy that they created in my house, I have a big, nice, beautiful house here in Marietta, man, like my wife and I would walk into their rooms as we were like cleaning and getting everything ready and, you know, preparing our house now because they're gone. And we would just like start crying. Like we would just have like this overwhelming, like energy, you know, expansion or feeling. So to your question about EMF, highly, highly recommend a book that is called The Electric Rainbow. And it's by, I forget the guy's name, but you can Google it and look it up real quick. But uh, mm -hmm. this guy's book, he's lecturing now all around the world. It's got like six or 7,000 uh, reviews on Amazon. It's a profound book. I can send you the PDF. I have the PDF. I've read it like five times. It's unbelievable. Amazing. Electromagnetic frequencies right now are changing our cells, okay? He quantifies it since the beginning of the radio wave which is back in like 1870 all the way up into now with you know very harmful and by the way don't let anybody lie to you 5g and 6g packet technology is harmful to life it is a cellular dissonant wave it completely 
it does a lot of negative things, but it does a lot of things to our biological cells that are not good. So don't let anybody lie to you. They are not good. I personally believe, I wouldn't even say believe, it's an, it's an internal awareness that a lot of people's sickness and poor health from the last two and a half years, including you know, dealing with the C, is radiologic cell poisoning from these dissonant frequencies. And that book is a deep dive scientific analysis proving that, that what I just said is true because it shows what these things do to our, he our health. Now, remember, I already said, we are energy and frequency. We are vibrating po particles, you know, electrons, uh, neutrons, uh, protons, and standing or oscillating waves. You're standing wave if you're vibrating down here. You're an oscillating wave if you're vibrating up there. But at the end of the day, negative dissonant carrier waves screw with resonant coherent carrier waves. Okay. And so those right. frequencies, if you're absorbing those are definitely changing your cell and, and your, and your cell structure. And they definitely lead to sickness, disease, poor health. I mean, it's crazy, dude. Like we'll, we'll see much more of this over the next three to five years as five and six G expands. And, you know, hopefully wow. there will be a, well, look, hopefully the planet We'll get together and we'll wake up. And I think we will. I, I'm a glass half full guy. Uh -huh, uh, there's yeah. a lot more darkness before the dawn, though. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, yeah. because we got to wake people up, bro. If you got 80% vibrating in the red chakra, and by the way, too, I didn't say this, but these are all aligned with the chakras. Right. Got you. Got you. Right. So you've got root chakra and crown chakra. Right. So again, the human body or bio system, this meat puppet flesh suit is an antenna. Mm -hmm. And how do we align this antenna to get all of our chakras, you know, in this color vibrating in resonance? So resonance and coherence is love, dissonance and incoherence is fear. Mm -hmm. So if you're down here, you're in fear, dissonant energy waves and in incoherent energy waves. And if you're vibrating in love, you have resonance and coherence. I mean, again, this is all explained in quantum physics. If somebody wants to you know, dig deeper and fact check me. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, this is, I mean, I mean, look, you know, going back to what I was talking about with the people in the car that, you know, you get cut off. This is what you have to understand about that energy, because there's an energy transmutation. So instead of saying, ah, you know, being Jay Campbell at 45 and rolling up next to you and say, pull over, I'm going to pull you out of your car, you know, and you're that, and you're that person now. And you're literally like, wow, you must be having a bad day. And you wave and you smile and you say, I send you love. I'm not kidding you. This is the truth. Their negative field, which is dissonance and incoherence, you just sent a positive, resonant, coherent energy wave back to them. It transmutes that negative energy signature. I swear to God, it's yeah. absolutely, this is quantifiable, provable stuff. So if you do that, that person who's probably really, truly having a bad day and is angry is probably going to have a reaction of like, that person's sending me love. And then all of a sudden they're like, so if you can get to that place of awareness in your life where you can transmute negative energy of other people who are in dissonance, man, you're going to do the world a lot of good because Hawkins in the book also talks about when you get everybody to 250, I'm sorry, when you get 20% of the world vibrating at 250, it can lift 80% of the people vibrating down here at 50. Mm, mm. Because collective consciousness is, uh, think of it like all the ships in the harbor, right? So like certain number vibrating at a certain level can raise the frequency of everybody else yeah it's a thing well it's a big question of like how you're going to get a collective consciousness to raise that high i mean it's a hundredth monkey syndrome you've heard that the hundredth monkey effect you get a hundred monkeys vibrating at a certain level and then they in turn get five monkeys and then those five monkeys get another five monkeys and on and on it goes until you get to that 20 percent level where enough people are vibrating and quote unquote in resonance to lift everybody else out of dissonance. I mean, I think that's how it will happen. I don't yeah. know. I it think needs to be a movement. It right. It'll be, be some it sort of galvanizing. Movement. Well, so in my opinion, that's your, the answer is what you said is right, but something will happen here mm -hmm. and it's going to be bad. It's going to be way worse than any of the things that we've all experienced so far. Right. But then that will galvanize humans to be like, that's enough we're done. We're not following the puppets. We're not into the two party nonsense anymore. You know, we're not living under these, you know, draconian rules and measures. 
F off and everybody unites. I don't know when that day comes, but I do think it's coming. I think, I think it's honestly, bro, I think it's within the next 10 to 15 years. I really do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, that would be beautiful. So yeah. people who are vibrating in the red, what would be your solution for these people to move further up the beautiful color hierarchy there? I mean, it's a great question. I mean, because like you said, you know, moving from shame to guilt is, a, is an advancement, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? So, so I think the better question is if you're vibrating in orange, so you're close enough, mm-hmm. it's literally getting to a place where the best way to say it, and again, not, not easy. Yeah. As an energy being, which I've already defined, your vibrating molecules and standing or oscillating waves of energy, you will realize that energy cannot be compressed uh, or contracted. It is infinite, eternal, and ever expanding. So if you see yourself as an eternal being, a spiritually vibrating eternal being, you're not this body, you're not Jay Campbell or Roger Snipes. This body will die. This body will cessate. It will expire at some point. Maybe if you're in amazing shape and you do the things we talk about, maybe you'll live to 110, 220. <laughs> maybe, maybe you'll live to 150. Mm-hmm. But you know, technology, obviously all these things expanding. But at the end of the day, if you can get away from like fear of death, because again, remember body consciousness is the, is mostly people thinking about the fear of death. They're afraid of the sea. They're afraid of the bee. They're afraid of everything. They're just afraid. Yeah. But ultimately their, their fear is of fi- finite limitation, existence, death, physical body death. So if you get to a place where like, you're not afraid of dying and you're here, then you absolutely change your conscious structure, your cells to where you just automatically become courageous. It's like what you said, you know, you literally now don't worry, even though you might have slight hesitancy, slight fear still, you can make that choice. A a, a perfect example is you become the person who says no to the mandate of the, you know what? Yeah, yeah. And you say, fire me, Mm -hmm. I'll get another job. Yeah. That is going from anger to courage because you still have now decided that, oh, wow, I just lost my way of making money and my way, quote unquote, in my sandbox that I define my life. Cause that's again, what most fear-based people do. They have a box, that, you know, this, they're constrained, right? So now you just made the huge step to say, you know what? I'm standing up for myself for the first time in my life. No. Now what you have to understand, we're going back to energy and frequency is you just shifted the entire energy of your existence. So again, from a quantum physics standpoint, you just created space for something else to come in. Mm-hmm. And people don't think like this because they're so locked into what it is. My marriage, my job, my daily hours, my vacations, two weeks a year. Everything is provincially narrow-minded thinking because they're, again, they're locked in a box. So boom, you just decided to turn the box upside down. And instead of like thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do? It's just the law of the universe. Something else better is coming your way. You just have to get out of the way of it and accept it, surrender to it. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally get it. That's happened to me every time in my life, every step of the way, even when I wasn't aware of it, it would happen. But again, we have to get out of the way of the fear. And honestly, Roger, it's always... If I do any of these things, blah, 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 I can't pay the bills, blah, 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 I can't do this, blah, 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 I'm going to die. So if you eliminate the death fear, because you're like, I'm an energy being, I'm free to express forever, then you all of a sudden you're just like open to things, like you're not afraid, you know what I mean? So, I mean, again, I know this is non-conventional stuff that I'm talking about here today, and honestly, I'm very grateful that you're letting me speak about this kind of stuff, but there will be people that will watch this and they'll be like, yeah kind of dig what that dude's doing you know because it's like a one person at a time thing mm-hmm. and then no, before you know it everybody starts thinking that way no that's good that's good like i mean i've i've spoken um on this subject before with different people but like different areas of it sure um i've had a lady on here speaking about um uh crystals and how it works in- oh that's awesome dude yeah. my daughter my 14 year old daughter is a crystal queen <laughs> yeah all right i need to check out her posts <laughs> um she doesn't have any yet, but believe me man at some point she's gonna blow people away i mean i literally can call her up and i could say what about this crystal and she'll be like oh that she's 14 yeah 
Yeah. She's got like 12 books. You know, we've been buying her those books, the Crystal Bible, the Angels yeah, yeah. Crystal Bible, all of those things. But she's like a machine with that stuff. She makes stuff. I wear all her bracelets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's I awesome, dude. It's good. Yeah. So I, I just think it's good to, you know, keep drip feeding this sort of information to sure. um, I think it's to to give people their own power. You know, totally. I think a lot of the time people tend to look for uh, look, look out for uh, external validation. Right. And, um, right. They're looking out for the answers a lot well, of the that's time, it, man. That's you know? how they keep you here by mm -hmm. externalizing your power. They mm -hmm. disempower you by making you believe there's a savior coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and you are your own savior, but only when you go within. And, you know, just to pick that up, like, you know, because people will say, well, how do I do this? Because you kind of ask that. Not for this person, because they're not yet ready for that. But for the people that are right here already, it's inner work, man. Meditation, contemplation, introspection, sitting in nature in stillness, turning off the drunk monkey, which is yeah. the ego. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's literally just sitting in stillness and, and it doesn't matter how you do stillness. I mean, you know, Chris sits in his infrared sauna in the morning, you know, in the winter, I'll do that. Now I sit out in my, my, my jacuzzi in my backyard with my dog, <laughs> with nothing, with nothing, no sound, nothing, no phone, nothing, just sitting there and just like observing nature. And I'm telling you, man, that's when the answers come. That's when the purpose and the mission and all those things are given to you. And it's literally a download. Think of it as like a cosmic download, you know, regardless of your spiritual belief, you do receive this information from the field. Can I ask, um, I mean, some of us are, um, I would say probably blessed to be able to separate the noisy life to have a moment of um, just uh, stillness, quietness sure. for meditation. Um, for those that work extremely long hours in an office and then come home to having to maybe deal with kids or husband or wife and everything seems to be very busy and chaotic. Um, for these sorts of people, what would you suggest would be uh, a good way to find stillness? Yeah, it's a great question, man. All your questions are awesome. Um, it's not easy. Not going to lie to you. Uh, I always tell people start with two minutes. Everybody has two minutes in their day. You know, if that means getting up first thing in the morning. I, well, well, so what I normally find, and, and this is my opinion, but I normally find that people that say they don't have time or they're too busy, it's because they don't start their day early enough. You know, their day is starting too late. You know, they're hitting snooze on the alarm. You know, they're getting to work late, whatever it is. Like you, every person who's purpose and mission driven should be waking up at 5 a.m. It's just that simple, right? Obviously, you're going to have days when you're really dr driven and determined and, 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 and filled in. And you're going to have days where you and your wife or you and your family go on vacation. And that's not the deal, right? But I mean, like if you're a purpose driven person, you should wake up early. And your early morning should be encompassing a ritual. And if it's like I said, if it's only five minutes, two, I mean, it's, start with two minutes, mm -hmm. you know, get an absolute, uh, a journal, a document and a pen and sit there and write two or three things that you're grateful for. I know this is cliche, but it works, man. And then, you know, uh, where I went, where I've gone from, and I highly recommend people do this is I have an app on my phone and I always forget the name of it because I've been using it for so long. But it's called, <laughs> It's called Chakra. See, look at that. I did my 25 minutes this morning. Good session. I haven't saved it in my Apple Health, but it's called the Chakra Healing Beats, I think. Let me just make sure. Chakra Meditation Balancing 2.65. It's on Android and it's on uh, iPhone. There's no excuse. If you want to spend 99 cents, you can get the unlimited lock so you can go from top chakra down and, and reverse, right? But mm -hmm. it's profound. I mean, I, you know, I will go take a shower in the morning and I put this on my little Bluetooth Bose speaker and I am completely zoned out in my shower. No one can interrupt me. My dog will lay in my room, you know, my master with me, but, uh, but my wife can't come in. You know, I don't have kids now because they, they just, they just went to the East coast, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm not interrupted. And I listen to 20 minutes or 25 minutes as it was today. And, and by the way, it's programmable. So if you're a guy listening and you're like, dude, I can't do this stuff. I don't have time. You could program this for two minutes to go right through the chakras you know, 15 second intervals or whatever, you know, and it's a frequency that tunes that chakra. But I have been doing this, Roger, like I said, since, since essentially 44, so seven years, but I really became super conscious at like 45, 46. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. you know, and because I think it took time for it to work, you know, yeah. but like just two minutes, man, sitting in stillness, graduate that, um, you know, really, truly think about what you do every single day from a standpoint of like, are you doing it, you know, in the service of the people that you're doing it for? I mean, even just changing the mindset that you have of like what you do on a day in day out basis, like, you know, you got it, you know, you're, you're a manager or whatever it is that you do, you know, like you start thinking about how like you can do this with a smile on your face and with great appreciation that you have this job and you have this thing and you're doing this to help people. Just the mindset shift is huge. Mm. But, you know, I, I say just two minutes in the morning, wake up earlier you know, download this app. It's again, like I said, it's free. Use it, you know, train because it's in training your brainwave frequencies when you're listening to those sounds because they're created specific. They even have like a, um, uh, what do you call it? A a Tibetan chime, you know, bowls. I mean, I have the bowls all through my house, but I mean, I do, Uh I do 10 minutes of bowls every day. Oh, right, right. So yeah, talk to me about the bowls, because I've, I've seen, uh, I've seen like a few videos with people with the, with the bowls and just kind of, making these sounds with them. I'm like, it, it, it looks cool, uh, but yeah. I just don't know what it's about. You know, I haven't read about it. It just, it, yeah. So yeah. You're, you're, so, you're so. the first guy that I'm going to break this with. So my wife actually did this for me this week. I mean, I've been doing this for years, but I never, I never, I never did this. And so she said, you got to do this for the kids. So let me turn this on. Hold on. Can you see it? I, I just about, there we go. Yep, I see it now. Okay. I just see me, I, I strum it. Could you explain, obviously, because this this is going to be audio. Yeah, and, for sure. Um, the, those that are not watching this will be listening, uh, wondering what's going on. So, so basically, I have a, a giant Tibetan bowl, and I also have a uh, a gong, which is what you're hearing now. Mm-hmm. And I play it at least once a day. Sometimes when I'm really excited, I'll do it twice. Mm-hmm. Now, right now, I'm strumming it. Listen. So, so the, yeah. the bowls and the gongs turn it off um the bowls and the gongs are emitting a very resonant frequency a harmonic chord that will literally i mean very truthfully any negative energy parasitic you know uh entities that are in my field or space which very few are here because i'm always doing that anyway but if they are you know because other people come into your house and by the way just so people know this is not woo woo we are yeah beings of energy and in this third dimensional construct, there are all sorts of other energy beings around us, some not good, right? So it's like they can attach to you based on your frequency. Mm-hmm. The lower you vibrate, the lower the frequency of energy being that you attract. So yes, there are demons. Yes, there are parasitic energy beings. There are archons. There are like all sorts of shit. I mean, look, the military admits this now. If you have uh, three... But is it not 3D infrared goggles or scopes? And you go out in tonight and you use those, like you will be blown away with what you see. It's out there, right? So remember, we are only able to see in this third 3D prison prism mm-hmm. of vision. And when you unlock that and you see it from a different level, which is again what infrared does, you see everything yeah. all around you at all the time. So these these bowls gongs um have an energy or a resonance about them that when you play them they just get rid of the dark side like basically anything that's negative energy can't hear that vibration it's so profound and you know that's why the monks and the tibetan yogis and the lamas they do this like as part of their ritual you know their prayers and their meditations and stuff like that because again it's clearing the air it's clearing the energy field so that they can have like a perfect you know extremely resonant experience and um, I just have been doing it because I picked up from another influencer who taught me about it like six years ago. And so then I bought, my wife got me, them. I think in 2018. Yeah. And so, you know, I just, 
I mean, they're a part of my life now, but, uh, but they're profound. I mean, they really are profound. I mean, anybody can teach yourself, bro. You could buy one and have it come to your house and watch like a YouTube video on like how to strum it and how to spin it. So, so I was going to ask, um, is there, there is a specific way that you're supposed to strum it or is it like, if you do it the wrong way, you can send Not it the wrong really. frequency? <laughs> no, 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 no. It won't, it won't do that because it's impossible, but you'll learn like over time and practice mm -hmm like what sounds better right like you know mm -hmm. like when you were looking at the bowl and i know for the people listening on audio they won't see it but there's parts of the bowl that put off like a higher octave and some that are like a lower octave so by just practicing you'll figure out like which side sounds better you know because like i obviously mm -hmm. i always start with the highest octave Mm -hmm. And then I go lower and then towards the end when the bell, I mean, the gong, not the gong, but the, um, the bowl is like, you know, resonating and vibrating. I hit the gong because the gong is like, uh, you know, it's kind of when you hear the gong, you instantly think of like movies with like the Chinese, but the Yakuza, you know, <laughs> so, uh, Japanese Yakuza, but like, uh, but it's, it's like a whole different frequency. And so when you bring both of them in combined, it's like, it's just profound. I mean, my dogs, that's that that's a perfect example of teaching you like how amazing they are like the dogs initially were like oh my god and ran away and now when i play them the dogs come to the foot of the stairs and Enjoy. sit and lay on the floor and vibrate the energy field of the actual gong and the bull mm. so bliss. so what whilst you're playing that um your your own energy would be vibrating higher i'd assume so that, that that means that it's like um an amplified um it's a transducer high. exactly right yeah. right right so yours totally gets raised dude and and and, and honestly because i never really thought about it like this before i mean i have recently but if you do this every day so here's another thing to blow people's minds because we're energy beings how can an energy being get sick think about this an energy being cannot get sick, but it can have a dissonant carrier wave affecting its physicality, right? So it's like, you know, if you really want to break this down, our thoughts are what create our sicknesses. No one can get cancer or Alzheimer's or neurodegenerative disease or any of these physiological things without first having fear based programming from our mind. Usually it's worrying about not getting it and then we vibrate it in, right? Because we know mm -hmm. that like our thoughts tend to manifest. So it's like, if you really start thinking about energy and frequency, and that's really what we are. Well, if you're giving your body this resonant frequency from the bowls and from the gong every single day, if you have something sitting in your cells, it's a dissonant carrier wave, you're going to vibrate it right out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why the yogis constantly sit in an energy field with these magnificent bowls because they know it's cleansing their spirit. It's purifying their spirit in that energy field. Quickly, can you manipulate, well, not manipulate, wrong words. Can you duplicate? Can you, uh, what's the word? Can you, um, can you get that sound? And is it the same as like, if I was to have it recorded or played from YouTube, for instance, would it still give the same type of frequency than the the, the being actual there in place? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So the answer is yes, with the caveat being it depends on your technology that's playing it back. But let me tell you something even crazier to to to, to elevate that. We can wrap up. Uh, if you've ever done plant medicine like ayahuasca or five meo, which I don't. I don't recommend anybody doing anything but 5-MEO because as I say, when you take 5-MEO, you're literally blasted to the mothership and you are in the source field of consciousness. 5-MEO, uh, okay. Yeah, 5-MEO yeah. is like the desert Sonoran, the Sonoran desert toad. I'll send you an article. I wrote like an article about it that's like profound. It's it's, it's everywhere that anybody that does plant medicine or, or the toad, but 5-MEO will put you into what I call the source field, which is literally the frequency of God, the consciousness of God. And when you're laying in the field of God, and I know this is probably going to sound some crazy because people are like, what is this guy talking about? But like when you've been there, it is like an ohm and an um meditational frequency, but in a way that you're out of your body, 
but somehow as you're out of your body, you're feeling your consciousness. Because again, remember, as energy and frequency at our core essence, we are literally pure consciousness in these physical bodies in this third dimensional space, you know, having this experience, which you and I are talking right now, mm. which is imagined, which is imagined. But mm-hmm. like, you know, in, in truth, like when you can get to that level of hearing that octave or whatever it is, that energy and frequency, that harmonic chord, you can you can then simulate it yourself. And let me give you an explanation. So I've done 5-MEO five times, really only four, because I think one of the times I did it, I didn't take enough of it. I didn't take a big enough uh, inhalation to really get blasted Mm -hmm. into the next level. But my wife and I just did it on the beach in Baja, Mexico. In November of last year, we went to a yoga retreat for her 50th. And it was just the most profound experience. It only lasts like 20, 25 minutes, but we did it when the sun came up. So the sun of earth, you know, it's washing over your body and you're feeling this, but I literally Roger now, because of my experience doing this, I can now go into a really a hypnotic, a a hypnagogic state, which is, you know, deep meditative state where I can literally create the, um, if I were to go one more minute, bro, I would be out. I would literally go back into the field. So your wow. your uh, vocal cords, the intonation of your vocal cords, when it hears that sound and mimics that sound, can literally create that exact same carrier wave frequency, that harmonic chord that puts you back where you are when you take that. So it's like I tell people, I mean, I did, I just did that for what eight seconds, and I'm like, mm-hmm. I got goosebumps right now. All the hairs mm-hmm. on my right arm are standing up. So. Like you, you literally can learn to do that kind of stuff. That's why I always tell people like, you don't really need to do plant medicine or MEO or BUFO or any of these things. BUFO is is MEO, but like, you don't need to do any of those things if you really are taking the experience that you, you should be taking out of it. Cause I think a lot of people, unfortunately, like everything else, you know, they chase the high rather than the experience. So for me, that was like the greatest thing ever because like after the second time I did it, I realized that that's what the source field of, 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 of consciousness is. And, 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 and feeling that and being out of my body and having this like expression where like I see my body, but I know I'm not my body. Mm-hmm. You realize that you are consciousness itself. Yeah, yeah. You're literally just consciousness. Yeah. So that is like the coolest gateway to understanding and answer your question that those sounds can literally allow you to get into your base essence of really what you are. And I think a lot of people, you know, can identify the orbs, bro. I took a picture last night with my wife walking my dog and I took it three times. And I was like, I got to show you this. I haven't showed anybody this either. And I was like, what is going on? And she's like, you're seeing an orb. So I'll blow this up. So this is the moon. So we had a full moon last night. Can you see that? See see that green, like spermy looking thing right below it? It was an Mm. orb. It was moving like at light speed. And we couldn't see it except when we put the camera up. And then I took, and I was like, wait a minute, this is crazy. This is not like a, you know, a a fractal on the lens. The next picture, bro, I took another one. And look at this. Uh, This is in front of my house. You can't see it. Look at the green thing at the bottom. You see that? It's like an orb. I don't. Right Sorry. There? Hold on. I'll blow it up. I'll blow it up right there. Oh, at the bottom. Yeah, look at that. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you can't see these things, but the camera, which is a very advanced, you know, 13 Pro Plus, you know, mm-hmm. I just finally updated my phone in two years, <laughs> but it, it sees it. So, and again, it's another example of like, there's a lot out there that we can't see, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with our physical eyes but they're out there they're energetic expressions and they're all around us and so it's like you know i'll just end it with this man like when i went to peru and changed my life i learned an expression in peru that was called ani and it's from the mesoamerican indigenous people the check one up of the high andean plains are like at 18 19 000 feet and they teach you that ani means divine reciprocity it means know that everything is conscious Everything is sentient. Everything is alive. So if including the rocks, the trees, the, the, the sticks, the wind, everything is conscious. Everything is sentient. Everything is vibrating, like you said at the very beginning. And if you know that, you have to have a divine reverence for all things. You can't litter. 
You can't step on bugs. You can't go shoot, hunt animals. You can eat meat. I had to say that. <laughs> but, 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 you, but you know what I mean? Like, like you have to have a divine reverence for everything. And when you get to that level of awareness, man, like your life just totally changes. And I'm telling you, man, like that's where my life shifted. In 2019, being there is when my life shifted. I realized that it was all about raising consciousness and teaching people the value of that. And it's cool to have my other knowledge stuff and stacks, but like consciousness. And I'm really grateful, bro, that you let me talk about this here today because we talked about some really amazing things and I think it's going to benefit some people. Oh, it's going to benefit me. Forget anyone else. <laughs> no, no. That's awesome, man. <laughs> no, That's God totally bless you. That's awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's been absolutely incredible. Uh, it's just made me think I need to definitely check out your books because this is only through looking at your content. I'm like, this guy really knows some stuff. Um, uh, first of all, I definitely want to get those those gongs. So if you could uh, send me some um, some links where, you know, I can get the best ones possibly. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, and uh, yeah, I want to look into your books. But where can people find you? I know you're on Instagram. What's your Instagram handle? Yep, for sure. I mean, the easiest way to get a hold of me and like get access to all the things I talk about is just to go to the website. It's J A Y Campbell. So it's jcampbell.com. Mm -hmm. uh, click on the start here page. I just put my team, just put uh, a new badass testimonial video up on the homepage that actually has Chris Gethin in it. It's phenomenal. Uh, it took him a long time to produce that or whatever. But if you click on the start here page from that, you'll get access to everything. I have tons of free stuff I give away. All my books I give away on PDF now for free. Ooh, wow. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, just click on the start here page, jcampbell.com. My Instagram, everything is right here, man. Angel number 333, which is the connection between master teachers in spirit and you as body, mind, and soul, right? So everything is jcampbell333, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, uh, you know, wherever else social media is. What else? Oh, TikTok. I'm on TikTok now. TikTok. Bro. Okay. Okay. Nice. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Are you dancing on there at all? 51, 51, 51 year old on TikTok now. Ah. I'm just talking about this kind of stuff. But, yeah. uh, you know, it's funny because this kind of information, as you know, is really suppressed on the social media channel. So it's like it started off like gangbusters on TikTok. And then my team was like, oh, they found out about you, bro. You can't talk about that. My gosh. <laughs> it's just but you know, bro, if I was flexing my boobs and my six pack, maybe mm -hmm. I would have more. But, you know, it's not. But really I tell like you what, if you open up an OnlyFans account, then it would go viral. <laughs> Shot my penis with a <laughs> rocket, you know, and all. Yeah, I know, dude. It's crazy. There you go. <laughs> that is nuts. Uh, but Jay, thank you so much for your time. This is truly magic. Everything you've shared with us today. Um, yeah, I, in fact, you know what, I definitely want to set up uh, another time for you to come on the for podcast. Sure. We can definitely deep dive in some more stuff. At, at for sure, bro. Time. I want you to come on mine too. So, uh, I'll, I'll message you with the links to the stuff. Give me like an hour. Cause I got to go jump on something else real quick here, but no man, love and light to you, brother. I have tremendous gratitude. Uh, I can't wait till we break bread in person. Yeah. Uh, in my email, I will message you, um, with my WhatsApp. Oh no, we're already on WhatsApp. So just hit me bro. up WhatsApp. If you want anything, I forget. We shall, right. we shall. Nice one, awesome. brother. You take okay. good care of yourself. Until you too. Soon. Have an awesome day. I'll take care. See you. All right, cheers. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to The Roger Snipe Show. The aim of each episode is to leave you feeling more informed than when you started. You can expect a vast array of subjects from functional medicine to economic developments. Each week, I'll be interviewing experts in different fields to bring you an awesome show. The Rod 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 Roger Snipes Show.